guys, this is Comic Uno episode 221, and yes, the show is on a different channel. U usually I do it on Comic Frontline, but I decided I'm going to change up my comic reviews a bit, so please let me know in the comments below if you like this, but I decided um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably skip the in-depth comic reviews unless it's an issue I really need to talk about in-depthly, uh, and just do comic, you know, episodes. So to have the full show and obviously review every single comic uh, and, uh, and go as in-depthly as I want with the show once a week. I think it will be better. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if this is something you would like to see. Um, obviously, I already did the show, so uh, I already did talk about all the comics, and I just feel like this might be a neater way uh, to discuss about the comics. But again, let me know in the comments. And if you like it on Comic, you know, um, I feel like it's a good home for for the video. Uh, but let's get started. And of course, if you haven't seen the show before, this is the show where I talk about worst pick of the week and best pick of the week and everything in between. This week, I actually had a really heavy pull list, and that was 24 comics. And number 24 for me was X-Men Grand Design Issue 1. And not saying this is a bad book, it just was not for me. Um, you know, obviously, I know the X-Men's history, and, and they do an interesting... I guess way to tell the history, but for me it just was kind of bland and really hard to get through. Even though I like the aesthetic, I like that it was like very old school, even the way that the paper felt, really enjoyed that, but I didn't really like the story and I kind of got bored. So X-Men Grand Design Issue 1 definitely didn't give me enough to want to pick up Issue 2, and I gave that one and a half stars. Again, that is definitely more personal preference than anything. Uh, so moving on to number 23 which is Green Lanterns issue 37. I just have been really disappointed with this book. I felt like the artwork uh, was just so simple. Even the coloring just didn't mesh very well. Uh, I don't know. I just I did not like the, the artwork at all here. And then the story was just kind of boring. I just don't know where it's really going. I didn't care about um, the aliens that uh, Jessica and Simon were dealing with. They hardly interacted with each other in this issue, and that's like the whole point of this book. So I am going to keep it on my pull list for now, but I've been pretty disappointed with the, the creative team switch up with Green Lantern. So uh, I gave this one one and a half stars, and that was number 23. Moving on to number 22, which is Batwoman, issue 10. Uh, and this is another book I don't know how long is going to stay on my pull list. I really want to like it because I do like Kate as a character, but I don't really know where this story is going. Uh, I just don't feel connected to the new characters introduced in this series, the love interest of Kate. Uh, the only thing I really liked about this issue was Kate and her father. I liked their interaction, but I still didn't think it was enough to really make this issue. And then you have the whole trippy scarecrow thing going on in the beginning. Artwork was solid, though. Uh, I'll give it that. So overall, I'm going to give Batwoman issue 10 two and a half stars. Moving on to number 21, which is Injustice 2, issue 16. Uh, this was disappointing, because I usually really love Injustice, but I feel with this issue, it, it kind of was rushed in a lot of ways. We have one half of the story, which is the Wonder Woman Supergirl storyline, which is okay story-wise, but did not like the art. I mean, it's pretty much art in the cover. Everyone's gritting their teeth, and it just their facial expressions look really weird throughout the issue, and definitely there's been strong artwork with this book. And then the next story is Flash, and uh, which is nice, but it felt like the way it ended, I'm like, oh, okay, where's the next page? And there wasn't a next page, and just a weird follow-up from the Wonder Woman story, and I feel like Injustice uh, in print edition usually does a better job at splitting up the digital chapters, but here just felt uneven. So Injustice 2 issue 16 gets two and a half stars, and that was number 21. Moving on to number 20, another book I'm disappoint disappointed to see so low, and that's the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 22, and mostly the artwork. Um, I really didn't like the art change. I thought it was very bland. I uh, didn't like the inking. felt very dark, and the shadows just didn't work very well. Uh, and then even the story. I really didn't care about Rita's side of stuff. The, the stuff I did like, though, was the conversation between uh, Tommy and Kimberly, and I liked, you know, the conversation Zorda, Zordon had with the other, you know, with the Power Rangers, but it definitely didn't make this issue for me. So uh, very much a stalling issue for, for what's to come. Uh, so the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue two, uh, 22 gets two and a half stars, and that was number 20, I believe. Moving on to number 19, which is Dark Knight's Metal issue four. So Dark Knight's Metal, 
this is another issue where, you know, I say this about metal each time. If you love metal, you'll love this issue. If you don't like metal, you'll continue not to like metal. I just feel like it's really cluttered. They try to fit way too much into the story, and it's hard to enjoy the small moments of, like, the hawk, the hawk people um, having this, like, kind of mecha army going on in the end, which is very anime-ish, which was cool, but just there's so much going on, it was hard to really appreciate those moments. So Dark Knight's Metal issue 4 gets two and a half stars for me. Moving on to number uh, 18, which is X-Men Gold issue 18. Oh, well, I guess it matched up there. Uh, in this issue, love the Kitty moments as always. I do like her taking charge in some of the team moments. But the artwork for me just didn't do it. I hate the shading of this. It just kind of looks wonky and kind of messy, honestly, with the action. And the colors don't really mesh well for me. Uh, and then I don't really like the villains. I think the villains are really bland and boring. So, yeah, there's some interesting character moments here. But definitely not enough to kind of make the issue. So, I gave X-Men Gold uh, issue 18 two and a half stars and that was number 18. Moving on to number 17, which is Super Sons issue 11, which is part two of the the crossover of Teen Titans, Super Sons, and Superman. I usually don't get Super Sons or Teen Titans, so I decided to get them digitally for the for the crossover. And I like the potential of this book, but not a lot happens. It's pretty much Tim of the future, if you've been reading Detective Comics, attacking, attacking Superboy because of what he does in the future. I love the ending, though, because we get to see Cass, uh, we get to see Connor and Bart back, and, and obviously they're going to interact interact with Tim, and it's just nice to see those characters again because those are my Teen Titans. So it definitely gives me enough to want to pick up the next issue. But I didn't really like the art. I hated the facial expressions, and I feel like it was kind of really abstract and out there, the artwork. So, and also it kind of felt more like a Teen Titans issue than a Super Sons issue. So that was kind of another complaint with this one. But I gave it three stars, definitely enough to pick it up, probably. Especially with the cliffhanger. Now moving on to number 16, which is Peter Parker, The, the Spectacular Spider-Man, issue 298. And there's definitely some fun character interactions here, especially between Johnny, uh, Teresa, and, and Spider-Man. I like Teresa and Spider-Man teaming up. I like her character. Everything else was kind of eh. Uh, J. John James' storyline, uh, I believe he's interacting with the Shocker in this issue. I didn't quite care about that. I don't really care about the villains that much in this storyline. But the character moments make it enough to say it's probably worth picking up. So Peter Parker gets uh, three stars for this one. Now it's number 17. Moving on, oh, I'm sorry, that was number 16. Now moving on to number 15, which is Backways Issue 1, which had really good artwork. I love the artwork. It was really expressive, kind of fit this magical flavor they were going for, but the story was not there for me. It kind of felt like it was starting in the middle of a story arc, like I was picking up an issue 5 instead of an issue 1. I never felt connected to the characters or even the world, even though I think the artwork really showcased the world very well. The story didn't really make me feel hooked at all. So Backways issue 1 gets 3 stars from me. Now moving on to number 14, which is Venom issue 159. So Venom... Uh, this is obviously the continuation of Venom, Inc., uh, and with this issue, I, I like the Peter and Flash moments, but there's just not a lot of substance in this book, sadly. I want more from it, and it's already part three, we're halfway through the arc, and I still don't really know what the arc is trying to say. Uh, Lee Price is not, you know, very interesting of a villain, even in a book where he was introduced. Eddie Brock is hardly in the book that is his. Uh, so I did like the artwork though. It's a little bit darker uh, than Stegman's artwork, but I do like it uh, and I think it fits his style enough to not feel jarring. So overall I gave Venom issue 159 three stars. Still not totally impressed with this arc, but also it's not a horrible arc either. At least not yet. <laughs> uh, moving on to number 13, which is Nightwing issue 35. Decided to try this one again because Sam Humphreys, who I really do like as a writer, is uh, now the new writer of Nightwing. He switched from Green Lanterns and Tim Seeley used to write Nightwing and now Sam Humphreys is writing Nightwing. And 
still didn't really show me uh, enough to, to get grabbed into this book. Uh, you know, I dropped this book many times and I keep wanting to get into it because I do like Dick Grayson as a character, but I'm just not really feeling Bloodhaven yet. And even here, I don't think any of the, the supporting characters are interesting enough. Uh, but there were moments I liked. I liked the cliffhanger with the cop. I, I liked kind of the jokes they make throughout the issue. Uh, and the artwork is okay. So overall, I gave this three stars. Uh, I will pick up the next issue to kind of see where it goes, but it's not totally hooking me yet. So number 12 is, is The Defenders, issue 8. Which, uh, really what makes this issue is the dynamic art style. I love Omen being included in this book and then the mix of, uh, Marquez's kind of hyper-realistic art style, uh, really works here. The story, on the other hand, was okay. The only thing I really liked about this issue was the Defenders actually finding out Matt Murdock is Daredevil. Like, that was fun. Deadpool really wasn't needed in this issue at all. Uh, I didn't really care about the fight for the Kingpin status, but again, the art style is kind of what makes this issue. So the Defenders issue 8 gets three stars, and that was number... That was number 12. Now moving on to number 11, which is Betty and Veronica Vixens issue 2. And this is just a lot of fun. I like uh, Betty and Veronica kind of building their gang and then uh, finding stuff to do with their gang. Uh, you know, learning more about the characters that join the gang. Obviously, they're, they're characters you already know from Archie for the most part. Like you have Midge and Tony that, that join it. Uh, the only thing I would say, I feel like the artwork is very simple. Uh, it doesn't really work with the grittiness of what the book's going for. I think uh, maybe it could be a little edgier, but I like the story. I'm having fun with it. So Betty and Veronica, Vixens issue 2, gets three and a half stars, and that is number 11. Now moving on to number 10, which is Fence issue 2. And Fence is a fun book. If you like anime, if you like anime sport, well, I should say sport animes, uh, you'll like this. It, it really does embrace things like Yuri on Ice and Free and, and animes like that. Uh, and it does so here, too. They introduce the supporting characters. They introduce the rivalry again uh, and the setting of the school. Would I like more fencing in this book? Yeah, I, I kind of want to learn more about fencing, and I haven't gotten that here. But it's still fun, and every issue kind of gives me more uh, to want. So I gave this three and a half stars. So moving on to number 9, which is Superman issue 37, which is a lot higher than Super Sons because I love the artwork. I thought the artwork was really good. My only real complaint of this issue is that, and this is, you know, not really a complaint for me, but uh, there was a lot of Batman in this issue and it's a Superman book. Uh, and I love Batman, so I don't mind that. And I, you know, I love the Bat family more than the Superman family, so I'm cool with it. But I think for people that are picking up this as a Superman fan, you'd be like, whoa, there's a lot of Batman in here. There's a lot of Tim Drake. So I think they could have balanced it a little bit more. And obviously, it's a very much a setup issue. Oh, Tim wants to get super, uh, you know, get Superboy. Uh, and that's kind of all of the issue. But there's a lot of nice action in this one and a lot of cool character interaction that I personally enjoyed. So I gave this three and a half stars. Now, moving on to number eight which is Betty Page issue 6. And this one I just have so much fun with. It's Betty Page uh, learning to be a super spy. She goes, you know, has training, learns how to shoot a gun, learns how to fight. And I like that it really is a secret. She doesn't even know if she has the job or not. She leaves uh, her training and, you know, she ends up doing what she's been doing. She's an actress. She's um, doing photos. And uh, she gets a mission. She kind of screws up. And she's like, oh, I guess that's the last time uh, I'm going to do that. And then she gets a another mission and then someone tries to attack her. So I like that. I like that it's actually a secret that she's an agent. Um, and it's, you know, her voice is so great in this book and uh, it's just snappy and that's what's so fun about this one. Our work could maybe be a little stronger. Uh, there are two artists on this book. I do think the first artist uh, was stronger than the second one who definitely had lighter uh, pencils. Let me show you that. Yeah, the pencils are definitely lighter on the second part of the storyline. Uh, but yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a solid book. So Betty Page issue 6 gets 4 stars. Now moving on to number 7, which is Spider-Gwen issue 27. And I really love the story of Gwenum. And we get to see Gwen 
trying to deal with, uh, obviously, her Venom symbiote, and she's getting angry. And what I love about Gwenom is you don't know if Gwen will snap. Is, is this the moment where she's going to kill? She's ready to kill the cop that let out the rhino and, and hurt her father, and she wants to kill the Punisher because she didn't get to kill Rhino. Uh, but will Gwen do so? And, you know, her friends and even non- friends are trying to help her out and I love the ending though because we don't really get to see the supporting characters as much in this issue compared to the last issue but she does encounter Ben and she says you know you felt guilty you've had guilt um encompass your life and let's help each other so now I wonder is Ben especially Ben you know it's Ben Parker is he going to be the one to help Gwen get out of this? Will she be able to see the light? Uh, my only complaint with this issue, it would have been higher if it wasn't for the art change. Robbie Rodriguez does such a good job at showing the emotions of this book. And Veronica Fish does a pretty good job too. The other artist on this I felt like was a bit too light uh, with their pencils, but uh, overall I did really like the issue even with the art change. So Spider Gwen issue 27 gets four stars. Now moving on to number six, which is, every single time I have a card, it falls. Anyways, so number six is Invincible issue 143. Invincible, this wasn't the issue I was really expecting for the penultimate issue. I expected a little bit more jaw-dropping uh, jaw moments and more setup. But I like the character moments here. I like Marky figuring out his abilities. It very much feels like a throwback to the original and, you know, issue one of Invincible, where it's Mark figuring out his abilities, except the world is very different a hundred plus issues later. So Marky dealing with his abilities is also different from when Mark did. Uh, so you have also Mark figuring out, you know, how to be emperor and, and how that changes his relationship. So overall, it's a good character-driven issue. Is it the best penultimate issue? for a book that's always been jaw-dropping? Probably not, but I enjoyed it and I thought it was a solid, a solid issue. And obviously Ryan Otley's pencils are great, especially with the emotions here. So Invincible Issue 143 gets four stars and that is number six. Moving on to number five, which is also the penultimate issue of Copperhead, Issue 17. And this book is at its best. You know, usually this book was a middle ground book for me. I liked it, but it never really made it to top five. But damn, it's getting good. Uh, we find out the history of Clara, who's our, our main character, and she you know, spoiler alert, killed her sister. Uh, so that was a twist. I didn't expect that. And then that's why she kind of felt responsible that she had to take care of Zeke. And now Zeke's father's trying to find him. So there's just a lot of interesting, uh, jaw-dropping moments in this issue where you're like, oh god, I want more from this series. But we do have one more issue to see how this all wraps up. Uh, but I really enjoyed this one and was pleasantly surprised. So I gave it four and a half stars and that is number five. Moving on to number four, which is Marvel 2-in-1, The Thing and The Human Torch. Now, if you are a Fantastic Four fan, this is a must-buy. Uh, it really embraces what the Fantastic Four is, and I have not said that in a really long time, because I have not liked a Fantastic Four book in a long time, even though I am a very big Fantastic Four fan. Uh, but this really embraced it, even with Sue and Reed not being there, you felt their presence in the issue. And even the way Dr. Doom's here, I, it wasn't like, oh, Dr. Doom's here again. It, it felt necessary to follow the mythos and bring back the Fantastic Four. Artwork was gorgeous in this book. I don't know if it's the best of uh, Jim Chung's artwork, but still he has gorgeous artwork overall, even if it's not his best work. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. So The Thing and The Human Torch gets four and a half stars, and that is number four. Moving on to number three, which is The Mighty Thor, issue 702. And damn... The Mighty Thor is back because I haven't been liking the past couple of issues. It didn't really have to do with Jane and the setup just wasn't for me because uh, I usually don't like the, the the more Norse mythology of Thor. That's why I never was able to get into Thor. But this is what I really like about Jason Aaron's run is the emotions. It's Odin's son and Jane finally having a talk with each other and Odin's son saying, Jane, take care of yourself. And Jane's like, no, I gotta, you know, uh, bring this war to an end and I, I need to rally the troops. And I love that it's her as Jane uh, who talks to Odin's son and is like, get your shit together and, you know, 
take the lead. We have to deal with this war. And then she collapses. You don't know what's going to happen to Jane because you really don't know. Is she going to die? Is she not going to die? You don't know. And that's what's so interesting. And, and we do get to see uh, Doderman on full art duty here, which his artwork is so gorgeous, especially with the emotions. The paneling is just so good for this book. So overall, I gave the Mighty Thor, she's 702, four and a half stars. Moving on to number two, a book I loved and probably would have been pick of the week if it was another week, but Miss Marvel issue 25. Uh, it's no secret that I love this book, and I thought this was a great legacy issue because Miss Marvel wasn't in the issue at all, or, or Kamala wasn't in the issue at all, but it was still such a good book, and that really proves how much G. Willow Wilson has built up uh, Kamala's supporting cast. I love Kamala's supporting cast. We got Zoe, we got... Um, you know, Gabe, uh, Nakia, Mike, and, and they are great supporting cast members because they really hold their own here when they try to pretend to be Miss Marvel. It's probably the most hysterical Miss Marvel issue we've gotten as they pretend and try to be superheroes and reading parkour books and, uh, but in the long run trying to figure out what happened to Miss Marvel and what happened to their friend and seeing how hard it is to kind of be Miss Marvel. So I love this issue. I've always loved Miss Marvel's supported cast and I can't wait to see where this arc goes. And I really think Nico Leon's uh, simple uh, art style really worked for this, for the comedic timing and also Ian Herring's uh, coloring, keeping it all consistent even with the, the art changes with this book. So Miss Marvel issue 25 gets four and a half stars and that is my number two pick. Moving on to number one, which is Batman issue 37. Damn, I love this book. I give it five stars. It was just so much fun seeing Batman pretending to be Superman, Superman pretending to be Batman, Lois and Catwoman, uh, you know, interacting and growing this friendship. And the dialogue is just so brilliant. And yeah, it's not an issue about them fighting people. It's just them becoming friends with Catwoman and Lois and exploring the friendship that's already been there between Batman and Superman. And I love that's the ending. They're just playing baseball and Batman gets a hit on uh, on Superman. And you wonder, did Superman make him win? Uh, but it's just such a fun issue that you could definitely go back towards and uh, yeah, definitely pick this one up. So Bat Batman issue 37 gets five stars for me. And that is my number one pick. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic You Know. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links to my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.